This 345 kV transmission line stretches across the Connecticut countryside to intertie with other EHV lines in the New England area. The purpose of this film is to demonstrate the use of hotline tools for changing suspension insulator strings that support single conductors on the 345 kV steel arm H-frame structure. The observers on the ground are briefed on the procedure. Note that tool racks and canvases are provided to keep the tools off the ground and protected from ground moisture and other contaminants. A tailgate discussion acquaints the crew with the tools and procedure before the job is started. The first tool to go up the pole is an arm bracket, frequently referred to as a tower yoke, for supporting insulated strain tools used on the job. The linemen on the structure get in convenient positions for reaching the insulators from the arm and from the pole with hot sticks. The chance man on the pole mounts a trolley pole bracket on the arm to support one end of a trolley pole. The tower yoke bracket is attached to the end of the arm for supporting the strain poles that will lift the weight of the conductor in order to release the strain from the insulators so that cotter keys can be removed and the insulators brought into the structure for unit replacement or replacement of an entire string. Note the end of the arm is guide to the top of the H-frame pole. The strain plate is attached to the end of the arm and nuts are tightened to hold it securely in place. A chance epoxy glass wire tong is used for a trolley pole. This is mounted on the brackets that straddle the cross arm by suspending clamps of the type used on wire tong saddles. Note that a clamp similar to the one applied near the pole to support the back end of the wire tong is fitted around the arm and slid out to position to hold the outer end of the wire tong. These support clamps are bolted securely. Now a pulley which serves as the trolley is placed on the wire tong and the clamp closed to hold the wire tong permanently in place. Then the suspension insulator tool which will lift the insulators and carry them into the pole is attached to a clamp suspended from the pulley. Heavy-duty suspension link sticks with padded hooks and 18-inch take-up screws are set up to attach to each side of the yoke bracket on the end of the arm. The padded clamps are hooked around the conductor at the lower end of the insulator string and threaded ends are slipped into sockets on the strain plate at the end of the arm. The screws and take-up nuts are trapped securely with an eye bolt, so there is no chance for them to slip out of the socket. The padded hooks are tightened on the conductor using a grip-all clamp stick on the eye screws provided for this purpose. 
To get a better working position, an epoxy glass ladder is hung over the arm. This will enable linemen from positions on the ladder to reach out with hot sticks and release cotter keys and maneuver the insulators to release them. In releasing the insulators, the first operation is to push the static spring down so the cotter key can be pulled on the ball fitting. The man above uses a ratchet wrench to take up or release the slack as required. When the insulators are released at the bottom, the slack is released to lower the conductor. The string is unhooked from the top side and rolled back on the trolley pole to where the lineman on the ladder and on the pole can remove the whole string, lowering it to the ground for complete change or removal of individual units. In this case, this being a training demonstration, the string was hauled into the pole and then promptly moved back out as no changes were actually required. Note the suspension insulator tool fits underneath the second insulator in the string and traps it securely so there is no danger of it slipping out of the tool. Men on the ground work with hand lines to help control the end of the suspension insulator tool. Using 12-foot chance epoxy glass hand tools with insulator fork and ball socket adjuster attached, the men on the pole and ladder assist in guiding the insulator string into position at the bottom to connect the ball socket fittings. The man on the arm assists in this by adjusting the slack to bring the conductor into proper position. Then with insulated tools, the men on the ladder replace cotter keys and install the static spring. Using a grip all stick, the clamps that hold the suspension link sticks on the conductor are released and the link sticks are moved from the end of the arm back to where they will be transferred for use on the center phase, where the same operation will be performed to remove the center insulator string for unit replacement or replacement of the entire string. The same tools are used and the same procedure followed as for the arm end job. Other tools and brackets are transferred from the outside arm to work on the middle phase. In this case, the wire tong head is toward the structure rather than to the outside as it was in the other case. This is simply a matter of not changing ends of the wire tong. Actually, the purpose of the tong is merely to act as a trolley. The arm yoke bracket is installed over the insulator string to be used in the same manner as it was used at the end of the arm. Link sticks are put in place and fitted into the sockets above for take up of the slack in order to relieve the strain from the insulators. The padded clamps at the bottom of the link sticks are securely tightened to the conductor with a grip-all clamp stick. Here again, the static spring is pushed down with the ball socket adjuster and the cotter key is released. An assist is given with an insulator fork used to manipulate the insulators for unhooking at the hot end. The conductor is lowered by ratcheting the nuts on the take-up screws. The insulator string is unhooked at the top and rolled back on the trolley for replacement. The ground crew greatly aids in this manipulation by holding the tag rope tied to the butt ring of the suspension insulator tool, relieving the weight from the men on the structure. The insulator string is rolled back into position and the man on the arm will connect the hook into the eye on the structure.
Notice the static is a little shocking. The effects of this could be eliminated by a ground shunt attached to the cap of the insulator and the grounded cross arm. The ratchet wrenches are used to raise the conductor into position for rehooking the ball socket at the hot end. The lower insulators are controlled or guided by the insulator fork and the ball socket adjuster is used to replace the static spring and hammer the cotter key in place. Strain is released from the tool by reversing the take-up nuts. Now a grip-all clamp stick is used to release the clamp on the end of the suspension link stick and the link stick is brought in and sent down the pole. The second link stick is released at the hot end in the same manner, then released from the arm bracket above, lifted out of the socket, and handed to the men on the pole for lowering to the ground. The overarm bracket is removed and sent down. The suspension insulator tool is rolled back to the men on the pole, unhooked from the pulley clamp and lowered. The wire tong clamps are released so that the wire tong, which was used for a trolley, can be sent to the ground. The last operation is to remove the overarm brackets which were used to support the trolley pole. These brackets are designed to fit over either wood or steel arms. Notice all linemen wear two safety straps and are never completely unhooked from the structure. This is a safety precaution against unexpected static from the steel hardware that might cause a lineman to flinch and lose balance. 